Hi all, for our notable game today, let's continue our look at the evolution of chess style and look at the Budapest Candidates Tournament of 1950. So the game I'm going to show you from this is David Bronstein against Alexander Kotov, who is author of the classic work Think Like a Grandmaster, a very, very popular book, which introduced concepts like candidate moves, trees and analysis, etc. Uh, this candidates tournament uh, was very important after the FIDE World Championship of 1948. FIDE began a series of cycles that would select a challenger to Mikhail Botvinnik. Uh, the tournament was from April 9th to May 16th, uh, 1950, um, and the world was divided into various zones from which one or more players would qualify for an interzonal tournament. The highest finishers in this combined with other seeded players would compete in a candidates tournament to select the challenger. So the first interzonal was the Sorcha Barden interzonal in 1948. And nine players qualified uh, for this Budapest candidates tournament. David Bronstein, Zabo, Boslavsky, Kotov, Liliantal, Bondarevsky, Nydorf, Stolberg, Floor, Bondarevsky, who withdrew later to illness. They were joined by the unsuccessful invitees of the 1948 championship, but only um, Vasti Smyslov and Paul Kares took their places. Okay, so um, here, David Bronstein with the white pieces kicks off with d4. Kotov plays d5. We have c4, e6. Knight c3 and that Slav triangle is built up. Very solid, reliable, you'd think. The most common move here, Knight f3 it seems, or e3, modest moves. But we have here the third choice, which is quite aggressive in my book, e4, wanting to smash the triangle up. D takes e4, Knight takes e4, of course the piece is moving twice here. Bishop b4 check, and that's another slight snag. This comes with check now. A very, very sharp line now we have with bishop d2 being actually the most popular move in my book. Black now can actually ignore his bishop being attacked by counter-attacking with queen takes d4, hitting the knight here. So ordinarily you'd think, okay, well that might win a pawn. What about black's dark squares? They're all a bit weak, aren't they? Bishop takes b4. Queen takes e4 check. And here, another very, very sharp idea introduced, bishop e2. So not only a pawn sack at move 8, but also offering another pawn here. But this is too dangerous to take in this position because of bishop f3 just protecting the rook, kicking the queen. And white's going to be playing things like queen d6 if black's not careful, which would be very, very dangerous. So no can't grab that pawn. Black kicks the bishop with tempo, developing a piece, I know, to the rim. Bishop goes to c3, looking at g7. We have knight e7, offering g7. So a wild game. Bishop takes g7, black activating the rook. Bishop goes to c3. And now, actually, it is actually much more safe for black to consider taking on g2 with the queen. Uh, if bishop f3, then there's a disaster here with that rook on g8. With queen takes g1 check, so picking up, scooping up rook and knight and queen to follow. Wouldn't be very clever. Now the idea, David Bronstein is very, very creative sometimes. The idea is to distract the queen a bit more and for white to continue development. Plays a very, very interesting move in this position. Can you see what white plays? If I give you five seconds. Starting from now. Okay, queen d2, yeah, offering the rook. Because this battery would threaten then a mate on d8. Black did take the rook. And this is all actually, actually being prepared for also by, by Kotov's team up until this point, believe it or not. White castle's queen side. And the threat is queen d8, check. This can't easily be sidestepped. King f8, queen d8 is checkmate because the bishop covering g7. Bishop d7 is still leading them to checkmate because of queen d8 check, and the knight's pretty helpless here. <laughs> so that's the checkmate as well. So really, black has to do this, uh, use this resource blocking the d file. 
and now we see knight f3 so the knight's not even taken and the queen's attacked now it seems possible in the game queen takes d1 it does actually seem technically possible for black to play queen g2 i haven't found a bust for this with my own analysis uh, it seems as though black might be holding a quality an example line uh, c takes d5 queen d4 would seem to be one of the stronger moves with attacking potential on the dark squares and this kind of continuation is very very sharp where black can consider playing like this it's it's an absolutely crazy continuation but it seems as though it might lead to a, an equalish position opposite colored bishops where the black king is fairly safe yes so it does seem as though queen g2 is playable you might want to dispute that put your own powerful engines and technology on the case but for me it seems queen g2 might be in fact the better option than taking on d1 but this has been prepared by kotov's team bishop takes d1 knight takes c3 queen takes c3 and now king e7 and if black can start to connect rooks it's two rooks for the queen and the bishops are of the same color so knight and bishop each two rooks for the queen it's not a bad position potentially for black but this 17th move is what the cutoff team overlooked there there seems to be a number of tempting moves but there's one of with particular venom can you spot what white plays here if i give you five seconds to pause the video and think about the possibilities what would you play here with white starting from now okay knight e5 there are lots of possibilities now introduced more for the queen queen a3 it's a playground the position is a playground for the white queen queen h3 queen f3 which would target f7 it's lit up as a playground basically for attacking opportunities you see the coordination of the queen and knight especially dangerous it's a classic mix the queen and knight for attacking purposes against the king it's a classic recipe for disaster and how does black parry all these multiple ideas black played bishop d7 just to show you the power of some of the coordination possibilities if black had played f6 it's possible that white can play queen h3 here that knight cannot be easily evicted because this position with black uh, even more material up unfortunately his king's safety is now compromised and the remaining bishop and queen actually are pretty dangerous combination here so this is going to be winning for white getting material back with interest so the knight cannot be easily evicted uh, we have here the move bishop d7 connecting rooks check so prompting c5 but it does open up this diagonal to be a bit more sensitive that b7 pawn so he's prompted c5 it seems is that a waste of time no he's made queen f3 more effective hitting b7 and f7 simultaneously rook ad8 and yeah we have queen takes f7 king d6 queen f4 threatening knight f7 double check rook d f8 we have the double check king e7 and now the knight is held in position with bishop h5 so that queen d6 check is coming along bishop c6 queen d6 check and here now we have knight h6 yeah black does get a check in king d2 staying off the light squares away from the bishop and the knight can't check either we have king g7 and now knight g4 so the rook is no longer really helping the king there stuck there as much it would seem and faced with lots of ideas now queen e5 and queen e7 look really dangerous just in principle but queen e5 in particular you know if the king goes there the knight h6 is checkmate if you look at that uh, the knight is also holding f2 conveniently just, just to show you that on the board you know this position is not nice that's a checkmate so actually we see this move rook takes g4 is white simply going to play bishop takes g4 no he plays a check first actually forcing the king to make a, a critical decision king h6 bishop takes g4 now rook takes f2 king e3 
these pieces are, are not really helping that much especially this guy this knight on the rim it's pretty dim and asleep rook f1 now h4 threatens mate queen g5 mate king g6 but now a drag and drop tactic here instead of the king escaping if we play that check we want the king back on h5 how do we do that with a drag and drop tactic I'll let you have five seconds for the final move of the game starting from now yep bishop h5 drag the king back drag and drop here black resigned he's faced with a mate now queen g5 checkmate black resigned here okay so what do we get from this game well <laughs> some razor sharp lines were played back in 1950 this quick e4 is actually the third most popular move in Libo in that opening. Um, it's an interesting position. It's an interesting idea. It seems queen g2 might be a technical improvement on the game. Because in the game, yeah, after knight e5, the engine suggests that white is actually in the driving seat after knight e5. It's a powerful centralizing move. If the knight cannot be evicted, it's creating a lot more possibilities for the white queen. The queen had its playground in this game, it seems to me before the black rooks could wake up and coordinate and especially this sleeping knight on a6 here could wake up so a very very interesting sharp struggle and against a very well-known player actually alexander kotov because of his book um, primarily a uh, thing like grandmaster but he also did other literature as well and lots of other literature as well okay comments or questions on youtube thanks very much